What's up everybody, John here from ContraBim and we are back with another ARCHICAD tutorial where we are going to take our complex profiles for walls and take it to the next level here. So we've had a few requests here from the ContraBim channel on how to create a water table uh, within a stone veneer exterior wall assembly. Uh, we've, this has also been a topic that's been brought up on the new ContraBIM membership and community site um, requesting this type of uh, wall feature. And so that's exactly what we're going to cover in today's video is how to model in an exterior a uh, stone veneer wall with a water table and we're going to of course make this water table something that's uh, driven by a profile modifier uh, an offset modifier so that we can take it and we can stretch it up and down and it's going to change our finishes on the bottom and the finishes on the top now with a with a water table like this uh, typically they're going to be sloped uh, for obviously drainage purposes. Um, and so that can create a little bit of complexity when uh, trying to add in modifiers. So that's one of the things that we're going to talk about today in this video and uh, solve so that we can keep that sloped as is, but be still be able to drag it up and down. Um, but with that, let's go ahead and jump into it and we will kind of walk through this workflow. So uh, we actually did a previous video on how to take composite structure walls and turn them into complex profiles with the option of taking the exterior skins and move those up and down. I'll post a link in the description. So if you want to go and check out uh, that video to see how we can create these different uh, modifiers um, for different skins as shown here, um, then definitely go and check that one out. Uh, we are not necessarily going to be talking about uh, how to add that today. We're going to kind of take it to the next level here today. Um, but yeah, if you want to learn that, go and check out um, the link in the description and you can uh, watch that video. So what we're going to be doing today is we're actually going to be diving into our existing complex profile here. And what we'll do is we are going to duplicate it. And we're just going to call this a stone veneer with water table. Okay, so we've now created a new complex profile. You can see here as we zoom in that we do have a lot of uh, profile modifiers already in here for offsetting things on the bottom, offsetting things on the top, adjusting thicknesses. So um, we've already done a lot of work on this existing profile. But what we're going to do now is we're actually going to split this in half. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a line here and we're just going to set this base point at like maybe like two foot six. And what I want to start with here is we're going to take our two skins that we have on the exterior and we are going to split them right down this point right here. And just notice here as we split them, we've now kind of blown up some of our exterior or some of our existing modifiers here. So we have an exterior finished thickness um, that got blown up because we don't have it assigned to any specific element because we've now uh, we've now split that that fill essentially. Um, so what we'll actually do is we're going to delete those, and you can see that okay we still have these modifiers that are not set. So let's go ahead and we're going to build some of these back. So our exterior finished thickness we are going to hit the plus here. We're going to set this from our mortar is the base point that we want to work with. And we are going to add this in going to our exterior there. The other thing that I want to do here that I need to double check is our exterior mortar thickness. We're going to take this and we are going to drag it down. And we need to just make sure that our exterior mortar is still stuck to that exterior finish, which I'm not sure if it is or not. So we can tell if we hit tab here to see if it's red on both of them. So that did maintain its thickness there, or its, uh, its point. So we are good on that one. Uh, if one of them had gone blue, then that would indicate that that uh, surface there of our fill was not stuck. So, okay, the other thing that we have is our exterior finished top offset. We're going to come back in here later and we're going to add that one back in. So we'll just leave it there as a bit of a placeholder. And okay, so next step, let's go in and we're actually just going to model a segment here that we are going to assign, I don't know, maybe like limestone. Um, we're going to set this to be, let's go four inches by two and a half inches 
and we're going to give it a little bit of slope here of one half inch so that at the exterior were two inches and then two and a half inches on the back. The other thing that I'm going to do here um, is you can actually see our rain screen. We do have kind of a custom pen set here to this lath uh, jigsaw style pen. And um, we're just going to take this and we're going to set that back to kind of our base uh, solid line there so that that cleans up a little bit. The other thing that we'll do is we're going to take our mortar and we are going to extend it up so that we now have a full backing behind this new uh, component here. And the other thing that we're going to do is we're going to take our base thickness on this stone. And we're right now we're currently three quarters inch. I'm going to set this over 1.75 inches. So we're going to thicken this up to uh, yeah, two and a half inches. And so now we've made that update. And um, yeah, we're starting to look good. So let's go ahead and we're going to hit save on this. Um, so it is actually asking some modifiers do not have any assigned edges. That was the exterior finished top offset. We can go ahead and remove that. We can add that back in later. So let's hit OK. And let's see this in our plan view. We are going to apply this new profile. And then you can see there on our plan view, it did obviously update that right away. So we can see that we now can um, see pretty much that full width on that uh, that water table there that four inches and so that's good um let's take this and we're just going to hit f5 to see this in 3d and okay so our profile is starting to come into play um next step here is in order to make this uh something that we can adjust up and down um, we're going to need to add a complex profile offset modifier so to do that we're going to jump back into our uh, settings here and we are going to create a new profile we have several different options here that we could choose from that we could assign or use as an assignment um, but in this case we're just going to call this a height stretch um, we'll call this like a midpoint okay because it kind of acts as a midpoint there so um, so we're going to anchor this to our wood framing member here because that's always going to be kind of our wall anchored point even if our skins go up and down um, and we're going to start by assigning the bottom edge which is flat makes it really easy and we can see that is our two foot six that we had dimensioned in there previously the other thing that we need to do is we need to add our stone veneer uh, edge as well our top edge there so you can see I'm hovering over it it's showing red I'm gonna hit tab to switch the fill that we are assigning this to and now I'm going to click on that edge and send it in the same direction. One more time, we're going to add this and we are going to stick it to our mortar backing there so that all three of those are going to move up and down together. So let's go ahead and hit save on this and we are going to play around with this a little bit and just see what we get when we go to try to make modifications. So, okay, let's take this and we can extend it down. And okay, so there we have it. We can see that these edges have moved, same with our mortar. But now we have a really thick uh, water table, which is not really what our intention is. So um, if we go in the other direction, we can see that this will actually kind of uh, reverse itself or inverse itself. Um, and that's not what we want either. So in order to get this to actually stick we need to create another profile modifier that's essentially going to fix the uh, the height of this water table. So let's go in and we will make that edit right now. So we're going to create a new modifier. We are going to call this a height stretch. Uh, we'll just call this like a feature. So we can call these really whatever we want, but we want them to be um, because these modifiers show up in pretty much all different profiles, we wanted to be something that's a little bit generic so that we can add these as needed um, to different profiles, but still have enough description there that it's easy to understand what it is that we are trying to modify. So, okay, this next one here. So in previously, we were doing a, an anchor point to an edge type of uh, modifier. This new one here, because this is a sloped edge here, we can't really go from this point to that point. It's going to want to set it as like a uh, something that's, you know, along that projection line there, which is not what we want. What we actually want is a node to node modifier. And then we can pick the surface or the face that we want to have 
stretch. So in this case, we've now added that new one. We can see that we're going straight vertically, which is exactly what we want. And this is the face that will move up and down. So by setting that there, let's hit save. And when we jump back to our 3D here, we should see that new line show up. So that did. And when we take our kind of main modifier here, we can bring this up and down and we can see that that ledge is moving with us there. So that is great. That's exactly what we wanted there. Now we do have a new modifier in here where if we did want to change the height stretch of that feature component there. So say to like one and a half inches, we can make that, but obviously that's going to separate these points between our mortar and the ledge there. So we'd have to do a little bit of work to fix that. Uh, one thing that we could do is create another node to node and then just assign that surface there. If we go in node to node and assign it to uh, you know, the same modifier, I don't think that's actually going to work uh, for us there. So uh, by, by adding in additional stretch profiles here, it can create some complexity to what we're trying to do. Um, in this case, let's hit plus. We are going, well, we already have that edge assigned. So we, um, we'd have to go in and remove it from the other one. So this would be our height stretch for our midpoint. We could try this, but I don't think it's going to work necessarily. Um, so we're going to go back to this one. We're going to hit plus on it and we want this to be a vertical offset. So we're hitting plus. Okay. So when this one goes up and down, we want to send that one up and down also. So let's save this and see if that works. Um, it almost worked. We can see that it did come off a little bit there. So, um, so yeah, probably something that I think is better stuck to our main kind of primary modifier. So I'm actually going to reverse this here. We're going to delete that and we're going to click on this one and we are going to set this one back. Um, that's, I think for the sake of simplicity here, I think that's best to keep it that way. And, um, yeah, we can always add more complexity here, but, uh, I will caution the more complexity, the more offsets more modifiers you add, the uh, the slower these things can uh, function for you while while modeling. So something to consider and weigh the benefits of. So let's go ahead and we're going to finish this off by adding back in a siding uh, element here. We can give this just, I don't know, a small gap here. Likely we, we would have some sort of flashing that comes right over this edge here. Um, now again, we can add uh, those other components in as well, but um, we have to just kind of think whether it's going to be worth it or not to load down the profile even more by adding in. Uh, it'd probably take, you know, multiple modifiers to keep that so that it's stuck in its position, moves just like our water table did. Um, so it may even be easier just to model in a quick flashing to uh, um, wherever we need it. Um, so, okay, let's go ahead and we are going to add one more edge to this here. So we're going to add the bottom of our siding, send it in the same direction, and we're going to hit save. And let's jump back to our 3D. You can see that that little issue should clean itself up. Or actually, in this case, our thickness, we did not adjust back. So we're going to set this back to two and a half inches. Um, Really, it would probably be good if you knew exactly what the thickness of your ledge was is to just change that in the profile itself versus having to do it here. We need that modifier there to just maintain that it goes up and down uh, with the rest of our profile here. But um, but yeah, it's probably good just to make the geometry as close as possible in the in the base profile. Um, and you can see that now things are working quite nicely. So all of our different skins are moving vertically, even our angled uh, face there. So that is great. Um, let's go back and we're going to do one more quick edit here. And that is to, uh, go back to our top offset modifier and we're going to add that one back in. So, uh, we will go to our exterior finish top offset. We're going to set this to the top of our wall and we are going to add 
that component and we already have our rain screen added so we are looking good there so let's go ahead we're going to hit save and now we have pretty much wrapped this up where we've now created that new water table we have it all set to essentially one nice profile modifier here so that when we stretch this say we want to send this up really high um, we can do that and it's going to work you know pretty well for us there so that's that's nice if we send this all the way to the very top say this was a basement wall and it's actually interesting we send it up to the top we can set it right there I believe we can also so that essentially gets rid of our entire siding there but I think we can even take this up further so I don't think there's any limits to this so in the case where we did potentially want to bring that up or say maybe we have wall framing here and a slab and we just wanted to extend that up to a certain point uh, we could definitely do that there also so very flexible here uh, we're gonna set this back down to four feet and a few last notes here let's take a look at how this looks at four feet um, how this is coming through on our um, on our profile here so you can actually see at our four foot cut uh, we are getting the representation the overall representation of the the water table here so that is coming through uh, but because we've set this to four feet um, we actually are cutting through that stone segment down below if we change this up just a little bit we, if we go to like three foot six then we've just switched this over where now our floor plan cut is through our siding so just to show where that's coming from our floor plan cut plane here four feet is where we're currently at um, again if we set this so what we will we set it to um, the last update there I'm just trying to see if maybe we can even get a cut right through that stone ledger there so uh, so our midpoint was set to three foot six so if we actually set this well if we if we set this to like three foot 11 it should cut right through that stone so we can see that that actually did in this case cut through the stone and so that's what that gray fill is coming from there so but yeah in most cases likely it's going to be below four feet because most of our windows will be below four feet um and so this is a pretty pretty decent representation there to show that okay we do have that water table um which is nice if we want to remove that from our plan view then we can just do a cut only and that will get rid of that segment if we do a projected it's going to show the pretty much the entire thing um, this won't really make much difference in this case at all so um, so yeah outlines only will show the full outlines overhead all um, really I think in this case I'd probably like to see the water table there unless I was very you know particular in how the output on the floor plans were and then I would only do like a cut only if you did not want to see that water table but it's kind of a nice thing to see on the floor plans to give you the overall impact and width of it there and um, so yeah there we go that is how we can add in a water table to this type of wall assembly so hopefully this video was useful to you if you like this type of content then make sure to uh, subscribe to our channel uh, we do a wide range of different types of videos here and um, yeah hope you enjoyed so let me know if you have any questions or if you get stuck on that the main thing to note and take away from this is that we are using a slightly different style of profile modifier here where we're doing the, the node to node and then assigning the face that moves along with that node to node measurement um, that's really the key behind getting these angled surfaces uh, to kind of stick and work um, with your other modifiers that can bring things up and down um, as we've been demonstrating here in the video so um, again i hope you enjoyed the video let me know if you have any questions and we will catch you on another contrabim tutorial very soon thanks for watching